Good morning, sixth grade. It's Mr. Kutke. I hope everybody is doing well, surviving. Uh, we are in our third week of development. Uh, this week is the big week. Um, if you haven't, you should be collecting information for all of your Atlas Obscura locations. Uh, inserting information, text boxes, bullet points, this is where we put it all together. Sixth grade, you are quite capable of putting these slides together independently at this point. Again, it is exactly like PowerPoint. But let me show you what a relatively well-developed slide would look like. We know that uh, from where we opened up, we know that what would be in the slides. Certainly name of place, location in the world. Why did you choose a location? Give me two reasons. One related place or near this place. I've changed it. It could be related or a place near it. Quite often, uh, when you go down to the bottom and you see your choices of related places or places nearby, uh, the places nearby are actually uh, more relatable than uh, the related places. So it is, uh, it is your choice. Uh, it doesn't have to just be related places. Locations website, if available, images and a map of location. Most of these locations do have maps. Uh, so let's take a look at a pretty well-developed slide. Uh, as I said, we started here, and I decided to go with um, uh, one of my slides from Atlas Obscura. I chose uh, a location here in Queens, the panorama of the city of New York. Uh, now, what I have done here is, as you see, I have uh, put in... Uh, what this was. The panorama of the city of New York was a uh, basically a gigantic map that was made of the city. Uh, it is currently, uh, it, well, it hasn't moved, I believe. It is in Flushing Meadow Park. You can go and visit it. Many of you probably have visited it. Uh, I chose it for a few reasons. Uh, I do have them listed um, in my bullet points. Uh, well, it was a part of my father's childhood, and it was a, really kind of an amazing place for me to go when I was a kid. I thought it was a big trip. Mind you, we're only going to Flushing Meadow Park, but it was kind of a big deal for me. So let's see how I uh, put everything onto this slide. Well, I have um, some information about the model, uh, such as the panorama was constructed for the 1964 World's Fair. In fact, it was at the time. Uh, this is later on. Uh, there was also a World's Fair in 1939, but uh, it was not constructed for that World's Fair. It was constructed for the 64 World's Fair. Uh, Raymond Lester and Associates, an, uh, an architectural firm, took three years. It took 100 artists three years to create this model. Uh, the panorama was updated in the 1990s. And brought up to date, uh, I believe uh, well, they do have uh, some incredible facts here. The model contained 895,000 individual pieces, including every building in the city. That is every building constructed as of 1992. And I've already told you why it was interesting to me. Uh, if you look to the right, you see location. I do give an address. I do give in the United States. I believe you would understand the continent if... Uh, you were talking about the United States. I do have the website as well, and I do list a link to the website. And I do have a map, which is from the website itself. When you take a look at the website, uh, I do have uh, uh, the actual map of the location. Uh, related places, uh, I chose a place that was nearby, Flushing Meadow Park. I did list uh, a few images, four images, and a map as well, and I wrote a little bit about it. Designer Robert Mosey created the 897-acre park for the 1939 World's Fair. It was a basically a dumping ground before that, if you read a bit, uh, bit up on it. 
So that was kind of uh, interesting. It was basically a dumping ground. A lot of Queens was not very desirable. It was basically a place to go between Manhattan and uh, Long Island, which at the time was a place where many of the wealthy people would live. Um, what else do I have? On the left-hand side, I have photos. And I have a video. I chose a video. Uh, here's how this works. When you go, all of this is done in insert. What am I dealing with today? Text boxes. I created text boxes. I use word art. Uh, I got my bullets over here. Uh, as you see on this particular text box, I did a little bit of background fill. I did some custom fill and I did transparency so I could still see through it. But uh, I can see the words a little easier, but I could still see through it. So I could still see the background. Uh, you might want to ultimately change the wording here. Uh, you might want to change the wording to a different color, make it a little easier to read, a little hard for you guys to read from there. I could certainly move it up. The facts are there. I would probably turn this black if I went a little further. Uh, but uh, all of these things, uh, you certainly can change the fonts. You guys know how to do it. Um, also a video over here. How did I get that video? Also an insert. I went to video, simple as that. And I went to right here. I typed in Panorama of New York City. It is a great feature that Slides has. You can add videos if you'd like to add interest or content. When you click on that video, maybe you want it to stop for a moment. It would play the video. You could uh, certainly increase its size. See what you have there and give your um, audience a little visual tour of what is occurring. I can pause it there. Uh, so that is a great, great option. I would love to see that on your slides if you added a little video to bring the slide further to life. Again, if you were presenting this, you would have to take a moment out to show the video but it is a fascinating uh, entrance. I would not put a long video in there. This video happened to be a minute and 16. Uh, you can show some of it, you can show all of it. Uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of fonts that I used, I ended up using a font called Caveat for all of the wording. Um, played around a little bit with outlines and fillers in terms of my titles. Uh, but that is one out of, uh, this is basically one out of four slides that you will be making. Uh, there are a lot of things packed in here. Uh, you can and should be doing something relatively similar for all of your location choices. This is what I'm expecting to see in the final pro uh, project. Uh, I have not added anything on yet. We are going to deal with transitions and all of those things later on. Uh, this is just a sample sixth grade of a slide that I would expect you to develop for this project. Uh, please get started on it if you haven't. Again, this is the beginning of your third week. Uh, let's just take a quick look at what we have here. Um, again, third week. Uh, text bo boxes, bullet points, adding all the information to the slide. Uh, the artwork is for the week after, uh, when we are in the beginning of May. So, uh, sixth grade, I miss you guys tremendously. Uh, hopefully, I will see you. I am sure I will see you uh, sooner than later. I'm sure at some point this year we will meet again, hopefully. And uh, there is week three, development of the actual slide. Hope everyone is well, safe and happy, and I will see you soon, kids. Be good.